Hey, what's up guys? Tyler here with Secure Team. On this channel, we, we talk a lot about UFOs, aliens, uh, the unexplained mysteries in our skies and in space. We show a lot of footage, a lot of photos, and a lot of eyewitness testimony. And based on that evidence alone, I think we've been able to build a very strong case over the years that yes indeed, there are unknown things in our skies, unidentified craft if you will. We know that likewise, there has also been much mysterious activity happening in space. But due to this subject and the fact that these craft and this phenomenon is so elusive and it is so hard to peg down, Today I'd like to feature some documents that come straight from the horse's mouth and that provide proof that this phenomenon is not only real but that it has been ongoing, that there has been a cover up of said phenomenon, and finally that it doesn't show any signs of stopping anytime soon. So without further ado, today we will discuss 5 government documents that prove the alien phenomenon exists. For good reason, this is one of the most important UFO documents we have. On September 23rd, 1947, right at the beginning of the so-called modern UFO era, General Nathan Twinning, head of the U.S. Air Material Command, or AMC, wrote a classified letter to Air Force General George Shulgin regarding the quote, flying disks. He said the objects were real and not visionary or fictitious. They may possibly be natural phenomena, he wrote, such as meteors. However, he then went to say, quote, The reported operating characteristics such as extreme rates of climb, maneuverability, and action, which must be considered evasive when sighted, lend belief to the possibility that some of the objects are controlled either manually, automatically, or remotely. Twinning listed several common descriptions of UFOs. They generally were silent, had a metallic or light reflecting surface, were circular or elliptical in shape, and often flat on the bottom. Many descriptions indicated a dome on top. Several reports indicated they flew in formation, quite specific information indeed. UFO skeptics have pointed to Twinning's statement that no wreckage of a flying disc had been recovered, and it's true that he was probably in a good position to know. However, what we don't know is whether Twinning would have been able to tell Shulgin about a UFO crash if indeed such a thing had happened. Simply put, if Shulgin lacked a need to know, Twinning could not have told him. On the other hand, Twinning did state that UFOs were not secret American craft. This came as a surprise to General Shulgin, who expected to learn that there was nothing to the affair and that everything was under control. Looking back more than 50 years, the idea of the military at that time having some sort of secret craft has pretty much fell to the wayside. There is simply no credible evidence that the US had any craft like this in 1947, experimental or otherwise, that could duplicate the reported maneuvers of these flying saucers. This three-page document is just as extraordinary and mysterious as the Twinning Memo, where on January 31st, 1949, the FBI issued a memo on UFOs entitled, Protection of Vital Installations. The classified document was sent to Director J. Edgar Hoover, along with the Army's G2, the Office of Naval Intelligence, and the Air Force Office of Special Investigations. It mentions a meeting among these groups concerning UFOs, with a key statement of the document reading, quote, Army intelligence has recently said that, quote, the matter of unidentified craft or unidentified aerial phenomena, otherwise known as flying disks, flying saucers, and balls of fire, is considered top secret by intelligence officers both the Army and the Air Force. Now mind you guys, this was just a year and a half into the modern area of UFOs, where for quite some time the government had been telling the public that this phenomenon was nothing more than a combination of hoaxes, hallucinations, conventional aircraft, and misidentifications. So why then was this subject considered top secret? 
The answer is contained in the memo itself, where in it, it discusses a near collision by a commercial airliner with a large, quote, rocket-type craft that had windows on it, no less, and that was traveling at an estimated speed of some 2,700 miles per hour. More serious, the memo explains, were invasions of sensitive airspace by unknown objects in the vicinity of the Atomic Energy Commission's installation at Los Alamos, where on multiple occasions, the witnesses of these unexplained phenomena were special agents of the Office of Special Investigation, airline pilots, military pilots, and Los Alamos security inspectors. The memo goes on to explain that, quote, recent observations have indicated that the unidentified phenomena travel at a rate of speed estimated at a minimum of 3 miles per second and a maximum of 12 miles per second, or a mean calculated speed of 7 and 1 half miles per second or 27,000 miles per hour. The memo then refers to, quote, scientific reasons why the objects could not have been meteorites. This document describes a rather close-up and personal UFO encounter on July 9, 1951, by the pilot of an F-51 fighter plane from Lawson Air Force Base in Georgia. The pilot, a combat veteran from World War II, provided quite a bit of detail which was recorded in the report. The object was described as flat on top and bottom and appearing from the front view to have rounded edges and slightly beveled. The object was completely round and spinning in a clockwise direction. No vapor trails or exhaust or visible system of propulsion. Described as traveling at a tremendous speed, Pilot State's object was 300 to 400 feet from the plane and appeared to be 10 to 15 feet in diameter. Pilot states he felt a disturbance in the air described as a bump when the object passed under the plane. Pilot is considered by associates to be highly reliable, of mature judgment, and a credible observer. From late 1989 to the spring of 1990, hundreds of reports of lighted objects, often described as large triangular-shaped craft, were recorded in Belgium. The most spectacular sighting took place on the night of March 30, 1990, where thousands of witnesses saw one or more low-flying triangular UFOs with bright lights flashing in the center. The Belgian Air Force sent two F-16s to intercept the UFOs, which were tracked by several NATO radar stations. The pilots also tracked the objects on radar, but the F-16s, among the top jet interceptors in the world, were thoroughly outclassed by the triangular objects. Not only being able to accelerate at incredible speeds, but also having the ability to change altitude almost instantly. Major P. Le Bretz of the Belgian Air Force General Staff did not seem to think these were American craft. His report on observation of UFOs during the night of March 30, 1990, includes a detailed chronology of events and dismisses several alternative hypotheses. The speeds measured at the time and the altitude shifts exclude the hypothesis according to which planes could be mistaken for the observed UFOs. The slow moves during the other phases differ also from the moves of conventional planes. Though speeds greater than the sound barrier have been measured several times, not any bang has been noticed. Here also, no explanation can be given. So as technology has advanced, along with the government's ways of hiding this information, it's been much harder over the years to get a hold of documents or memos. They now know what these things are and that this is very real. And although documents have been scarce over the past 20 years, I'd have to say one of my favorite revelations that came in a set of secret documents released recently by a man who goes by the name of Victor Vigiani. In the 11 files that come directly from NORAD, otherwise known as the North American Aerospace Defense Command, detail the fact that over the last five years alone, there have been on average around 1,800 tracks of interest 
with at least 75 actual UFO intercepts. What this means is that the fighter jet pilots manage not only to get close enough to the UFOs and establish visual contact, but also to get a target lock. Along with an air traffic control report about an incident in which two Canadian CF-18s scrambled from the Kamox Air Force Base pursued three UFOs at an altitude of about 35,000 feet, where they then gained contact and engaged the unidentified craft. Paul Hellyer, the former Canadian Defense Minister, has also spoken about this 2001 UFO intercept incident. And so there you have it. Today we've spoken about five of the most important and in my opinion telling documents that prove and shed light on the early days when the government was still trying to grasp what exactly was happening all the way up to now when not only did we know what they were, but that there was no way possible they could be natural or created with our own technology. I am Tyler with Secure Team. Thank you guys for stopping by today. Let me know what you think down below and stay tuned for a future video where we will be documenting five more of these once classified documents that once again further prove that all of this research we've been doing on this channel is not in vain and that we are definitely on the right track. Stay safe guys.